All right, so like I mentioned a second ago, if you just try to run this right after downloading, you don't have the API key file. So let me show you how to actually get that set up. I do mention that there are instructions on the GitHub page. So if you go to there and then scroll down, there's instructions here, but I'll walk you through it anyway. It's not really that difficult. So what you have to do is go to console.cloud.google.com and then it'll probably the first time give you a thing that you have to agree to the terms and then you probably don't have any projects so it'll probably say select a project and then if not you still click this and just go to new project here and basically we're going to create a project on your account that will tell Google what permissions and stuff that the program is going to get. Now you can literally call it whatever you want, but it does have to be unique, I believe. So we can just call it spammer, deleter, and then some numbers after it because some people might use that as well. And then we can just click create. Then it'll take a second to create it. And then you can select project. And now you'll see at the top that this is selected. Next, we need to enable the YouTube data API for the project. So if this didn't pop out, you can just click navigation menu, hover over APIs and services, and then go to library. On this page, scroll down and click YouTube data API. If you're trying to scroll and it doesn't work, make sure you hover your mouse over the bottom half of the page and then just click this box here, or you can search for it and find it that way. So YouTube data API V3 and then click enable. So you give it a second and it'll take you to this page. If you ever need to get back to this page, so for example, let's say you're back at the main page, what you can do is go to navigation menu, click APIs and services, dashboard. Then if you scroll down, it'll list all the ones you have on this project and you just click YouTube data API again and you're back here. So we need to create credentials. That's gonna be the file. So you click create credentials. And then here just basically follow these steps. So you click YouTube data API again, we're gonna do user data, click next, and don't click done yet. We're still going through all these. And so app name, again, it doesn't really matter. We can call it spammer deleter. And I don't think this one has to be unique. And then for support email, no one's gonna be using this so except for you, so it doesn't matter. And then again, just put in whatever you want, click save and continue. Most of this is gonna sound like it's assuming that other people are gonna be using the app, but they're not. So then we click for scopes. It says optional, but we do have to do this. So add or remove scopes. It'll pop out this thing on the right and then click next 10 rows and just go over until you see the YouTube data API one and under scope, make sure it's the one that says YouTube force SSL. That's the one we need. And then scroll down to the bottom, click update. And then now you should see it under your sensitive scopes. And then we click save and continue again. And then for application type, just click desktop app. It's the easiest one. And it we can name that whatever you want, it doesn't matter. So now it'll show you what's called the client ID. We don't need this, but what we will do is click download, and then this will actually download the file that we need. So you actually want to rename this to client secret, client underscore secrets dot JSON. And if you don't see an extension, it doesn't say JSON, that should be fine. If you don't have file extensions named, it might just say client secrets, but if you hover over it, it should still say type JSON file, so that's fine. Or you can double check by clicking view and then file name extensions, and then it should show the whole thing. So then just copy this file and then put it wherever you have the exe file or the Python script if you're doing it that way, and just have it in the same folder. And if you need to get back to the credentials again, like you click done, then what you can do is back in the API services, so navigation bar, and then APIs and services, you just go to credentials, and then you can download it by clicking the download OAuth client file. And then you click download JSON, and that will download the same thing before. And also make sure you don't share client ID or client secret with anyone. I'm gonna blur it out here. Don't share the file with anyone else either. So anyway, after you have the file in there, when you double click the program, this time it should pop up a window right away to have you log in and authorize the account. So make sure you log in with a Google account that has your channel, click on the channel then, now, if it says access denied and you're definitely logging into the same account that is the owner of the YouTube channel, you probably have to do one more step. So what we do is close it out and then under the navigation menu, go to APIs and services and then OAuth consent screen and then go down to under test users, click add users. Now you do not want to publish the app. That would basically let other people 
use this project. It wouldn't grant access to your YouTube channel, but it would let them take up your quota. So you don't really want them to do that. So you click add users and then just add the account email they were using again and then click save. And now we can try it again. And there we go. So we'll say Google hasn't verified this app and then you click continue. And then you're gonna have to grant the project access. And this is gonna look scary because it says see edit permanently delete your YouTube video rating. It's like literally everything, but it needs that permission to be able to delete the comments. And remember this is your project. Spammer deleter is the thing that you created. So granting it access is not a problem. You click allow and then it says authentication flow has completed. And then now you'll notice that probably in the same exact window, it'll now show the whole thing for running it and actually it will renew it and you'll see the token.pickle, that's like the actual permission. So next time you run it, you won't have to do this again. It'll just remember it and load it right away.